Sorry, that recording just stopped in, I'm not sure why. Well, I will get this back on. Basically, I'm just redoing the last five minutes. Once I've got that on there and I'm happy with it, I'll bring you back as I make the final adjustments of the rangefinder. Well, while you weren't watching because I hadn't turned the video camera on, I just made the final adjustments. My vertical adju alignment was spot on, no problem there at all. My horizontal, horizontal alignment was slightly off, not by much, just slightly off. So basically here was my lock screw here, I had to slacken that off and make my adjustment here. That's a cam, that's an eccentric screw which basically pushed this arm further across there, effectively rotating the the, the the arm further out. But now my rangefinder is working accurately, and well it's working at all as a wonder, but it's working nicely. So there's no problem with the rangefinder. And the camera top could just about go back on at this stage. A few little bits and pieces to go on here. I've got the Range finders all in place. What goes on here? This is the support for a, the frame counter. There are two screws hold that in position. Let's get those in place. That bracket, you yeah, know it's clean. Thought that was covered in dirt, but it wasn't. Now the frame counter. Its chrome has certainly suffered in the wars. It doesn't want to go down in there either for some reason. Put a bit of synthetic grease on that shaft. Might just be very, very dry. That does not want to go in. Is that oh, it's got to go in underneath the arm of my range finder. Can we get that in under there? We can get it in one way or the other. Let's put that in this way. Depends on the positioning of that arm exactly where how easily this would go in place. That's better. Let's pop that in there. I can see a mark on the top of the rangefinder arm where that's actually been rubbing. That arm is a bit sitting a bit high. Of course it didn't begin its life with this particular camera. So, would the frame counter work? Let's have a look. Yep. I can see that that goes. 
That range finder arm, I'm going to bend that downwards, I think, slightly while I'm here. It's just sitting a bit high. It's just rubbing on that frame counter. I don't really want that. Just uh, give that a little bit of uh, persuasion. Make sure it's not rubbing on anything. Now that looks good. That'll stop it rubbing on here. I might see if I've got a better frame counter dial than that one. That one has uh, lost a fair bit of its chrome. That's good. It's not rubbing on anything anyway. That's the main thing. That's good. Okay, so... Got to worry about the top of my camera next, don't I? Better go and find that. Well, that video camera is sluggish at catching up, isn't it? Well, this is the top cover that came with the camera, complete with that mess underneath there, which very likely would foul the rangefinder mechanism in the camera. This bloody stupid arrangement here. And the uh, flash watt growing through the side of the top housing. I think we can scrap that. I don't think that's worth using. I've got another top here. It's by no means perfect. It's the best top I've got spare. I'll clean this. I might steal the screws from the top of the other one. And then that can go on the camera, I think. And at that stage, I will be starting to look quite good. Let's get this off first. If four very small chrome plated screws hold this on here. We've got to replace this panel because the camera has that well, well it would have four holes through it where that shoe's been fitted. And we might as well replace this piece as well because that, this one's got that flash wart growing out of it. That's been screwed in there, they've made a proper mess. Let me clean this up first and put this one in place I think. But there'll be not much excitement going on here, I think basically this will just be cleaning this down with a bit of naphtha. The top plate put back pretty much last of all. You can make final adjustments to the range finder without that top plate there. Not serious changes like what I was doing earlier but just minor adjustments in the vertical and horizontal alignment can certainly be made through that space at the top. So does that mean that someone removed the range finder from this camera in order to make provision for the space they've used up for that particularly crappy way of fixing that particularly crappy accessory shoe. Well, that's certainly a possibility. It would certainly be an odd choice to leak the rangefinder to make, make it easy to uh, fit your crappy accessory shoe in place. I think we'll use that as the uh, the probable reason for why that's got no rangefinder. I can't think of any other vaguely useful reason why you'd want to delete the rangefinder. 
unless somebody was having a go at adjusting it had made such an awful job of it that they decided they were better off without it. I suppose that's a possibility. Right, well that part looks okay. I'll clean the inside of it and then I'll clean the glass. The top has so many windows because at the back of the finder you've got your viewfinder window here to peer through and this is the rangefinder window here. On the front we have our two ports for our rangefinder and the viewfinder here so it's a it's full on windows everywhere. This one's got someone's initial or number scratched into it. Some of this was, um, it's not exactly the same, but it was on the same base, the previous model, the Type 142, had a different shutter release mechanism amongst other things, and that possibly accounts for this odd slot here covered with this plate. I suspect that it may, may have had something to do with it. Well that's either there, it may be there just to give access to these two screws on the clamp here. They might be so that you could get access to those if you put everything together in the appropriate order. Right, the glass. We'll start with the outside because it's the easiest to get to. And we'll start at the front. Okay, do the inside of the front windows. Check what sort of a result I've got. That looks pretty good. It's a bit grimy around the edges. I'll see if I can improve that. That's very good. That's the front window's done. Two at the back now and we'll be done. Just thinking there's no point me going crazy doing fine adjustments on the rangefinder because I've got no idea whether the lens will be correctly focused extended out where it currently is or whether I've got to make adjustments so rangefinder is certainly to be adjusted after I have the lens and focus the lens all sorted out that's our top cover I we'll need the shutter release button off and I will need the wind knob off do I want to add any more lubricant on any spots in here. I think we could do a couple of little spots here. Let's run some on that cam. Some on the end of that tab. Some on there. I think that'll do. Check my glass, make sure I've left no fingerprints on the prisms. That's looking pretty good. Top cover, 
Hav. Two screws hold the top cover in place. They are the same length. Would help if I'd stay on camera a bit, wouldn't it? This one's always a bit awkward to place. This one sits up on a post, so it's hard to get the screw lined up correctly. That's it. And a shutter release button. And the advance knob. that shutter release not working. I must have got that arm swung across. Oh no, they were right. Now oh, that's working correctly. The shutter. I need to do the shutter. But while I'm here I suppose I could tidy up this top cover. Or the last piece of the top cover. Some of the Retina 2s have the 2 in a circle, and some of them do not. It signifies nothing as far as I can tell. It's just a styling difference. Alright, so that's our cover. It can be popped to one side. And next, I need to deal with the shutter. Well, here's our shutter. It's got the Ektar f3.5 lens. Remove the rear group. There's a couple of shims here, a paper shim and a metal shim. Okay, so I wonder when this was last serviced, we're about to find out. Screw missing there I think. 